barriers from campus recruitment? What if you can overcome the challenges faced in managing the internship and campus recruitment process? What if you can improve overall efficiency and outcome of campus recruitment? Seems like a dream? No, it's not. Presenting you the Muni Seagull, a revolutionary platform with the power of AI and blockchain, which drastically improves overall performance and the outcome, resulting in happy hires and you at the end of the day. Our AI-based profile recommender system helps you by providing best fit candidates profile to you for next best action. With Muni Seagull now within a few minutes, you can shortlist right fit from online dynamic placement brochures of hundreds of universities and colleges at one place. Our AI-based CRM helps you to keep all the data related to campus Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi, hi, Anita. Hey, I can hear hi, you. Hi, Prashant. Hi, Seema. Good afternoon. Hi, Anita. Very good afternoon. Yes. So, uh, a quick, uh, short introduction would be given by my colleague Suchi, and post that we can start with the pre-placement talk for today. Suchi, over to you, Suchi. Yes, just sharing my screen. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jan and I'm from MUNI campus team. And campus provides solutions for campus placements and it's our features are able to transform campus recruitment. We facilitate seamless discovery of the right career choices and early career talent. In this process, we connect students, universities, and companies under one roof. MUNI Seagull is an AI-powered centralized internship and campus recruitment suite. We have ground-level experience and all India reach uh, in terms of treasure hiring. Seagull features and solutions ease the process, connect the best fit, and uh, add wings to your career discovery. We welcome all the participants for uh, pre-placement talk from uh, Funds and Petals. We have Seema, she is HR, and uh, team from Funds and Petals. We request you to start pre-placement talk. Okay, thank you. I'm going to uh, start sharing my screen. Uh, do let me know once you see the PPT with the uh, FNP logo. Okay, Seema Sharad, you guys can see. Uh, anyone can confirm. No, please. Prashant. I mean, your screen is not yet visible, Prashant. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we. I don't appreciate. know. Okay. I uh, say share screen. Yes, it is visible now, Prisha. We can see this. Prashant, your screen is visible. We can see that. See it. So as soon as I hit the uh, present button, my my audio is going on mute for some reason. Is it? 
Yes. Um, so then, um, I can show that right away. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And uh, as soon as I do that, you see my audio goes for mute. Right. Uh, so screen is shared, but your audio is mute. So just a minute. So instead of uh, uh, spending more time, Sharad, may I request you to uh, share? I will uh, send this link to you. Okay, Would it be possible? Is there? Or, okay. Uh, Seema, probably you can also help me. Yeah, just give me a moment. I already have the link. I'll just open it. Thank you. Uh, Aditya, if you can just make Sharad the co-host. <laughs> Okay, let me do just one attempt. Let me know if you can see the screen right now. And you can hear me also. Okay, just confirm if you can see the screen and hear me too. Yes, anyone? We can hear you but can't see your screen. Yeah, that's what. We can hear you but can't see your screen. Not the screen, okay. Aditya, if you can make uh, Sharad the co-host, Aditya. Done, ma'am. Okay. Prashant, I guess you can continue now. You're not on mute, but we cannot hear you as well. Let me try if I am facing the same issue. Um, is my screen visible? Not yet. It says you are sharing the screen and just yeah, yeah now, now it is now we can. And you can hear me. Yes, yes. Okay, so Should I share the link with you, Anita? Maybe you can present it and share your screen and Prashant can Sure, talk. you can do that. No problem. I'll share the screen on Prashant. Just, Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a... Uh... So all the participants just hold on for five minutes. So we'll start with the pre-placement talk. So just hold on uh, for two minutes. Let me make one more attempt, please.
No, we cannot hear you. Do you want to rejoin and see, maybe? Yes, I am going to do that. I hope I will be... I will have room time to join back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anita, it should... He yeah. will be able to join back, right? Yes, yes, yes. Sure, sure. He would be able to. So Prashant has joined. I think we may need to make him a co-host to be able to. Yes, yeah, Sharad, you're saying something? Yeah. So Prashant has joined. Uh, we may need to make him a co-host. Co co okay. Uh, Aditya, if you can just make Prashant co-host. Prashant has joined. I think Prashant has joined. I think we may need to make him a co-host. Aditya? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Prashant, if you can just share it now. Uh, Prashant, I have shared my screen. Uh, would you like to take it from here?
प्रशांत कैन यू यमी प्रशांत शरद इफ यू कैन यमी आई कैन आई कैन एम जस्ट शरद इफ यू कैन फोन एम जस्ट रीचिंग ऑन else you can uh, okay prashant is saying that he cannot unmute himself so let sharad give the presentation oh. sharad if you can start with the presentation guys are waiting actually and prashant can join in little later uh aditya prashant has logged in from one more uh, device i guess just make him co host Then, okay, I am able to unmute myself now. Okay, great, Prashant. Let's start. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, guys, for all your patience. Uh, I know it's been a difficult time. This is the second time we tried to connect, and we had our own hiccups, right? So we will straight jump into the uh, pointers. Uh, firstly, welcome to everybody who is here and people who are uh, uh, listening to this live and. Uh, who will be looking at the recording also thanks for taking out the time to uh, hear and uh, our uh, presentation here we can go to the next slide please uh, ideally the agenda of the discussion primarily we're going to talk about uh, what is fnp uh, all about uh, we will see the team structures what are some of the cultures that we follow um, sima will be able to go through some of the people policies uh, me and sharad will talk about the next four topics which is more of business and technology journey uh, what is a tech stack that we use and what would be some of the areas that would interest you is what you will be able to see uh, further we will also talk about what is the intern program that we do and uh, how uh, it will be interesting for you guys okay uh, next slide please <clears throat> so uh, you all know uh, fnp is uh, more than a 25 year old company we started with a small uh, shop in somewhere in uptown delhi with one store and right now uh, uh, within these 25 years uh, we were able to open up as many verticals as you see in this third paragraph which is talking about fnp retail and franchise e-commerce uh, our geography is expanded singapore is where we are dubai uh cakes and more is another vertical that we have so primarily when it comes to fnp people associate with with uh, a bouquet however apart from the bouquets uh, we do a lot of other activities also like you see uh, cakes is one vertical gardens weddings and events uh are some of the other activities that we do right now fnp has uh, overall 320 outlets these are physical stores across 140 plus cities in india and uh, we also own some of uh, the uh, luxury venues where a lot of uh, events happen right from sangeet functions weddings uh, big bang uh, corporate events etc do happen right uh, apart from that like i was saying we also have uh, presence not only in india but boots on ground physical stores uh, we have in some areas of the middle east as well as in the asia pacific region uh <clears throat> we can move ahead to the next uh, pointer we will talk about the team structure we are uh, uh, led by uh, pavan gardia who is the ceo for the global e-commerce uh, e retail section uh, we have manish saini who is the ceo for uh, india and the cto can is uh, vasant who is uh, Uh, you know the, the the powerhouses of fnp technology team these three people i would mention uh, where pavan and manish work out of the delhi head office and wasant and uh, most of the leadership team from uh, the technology point of view uh, work out of uh, the hyderabad office and delhi office also but primarily hyderabad office just so the cto is in hyderabad we we kind of call it as the powerhouse is in uh, hyderabad uh moving to the next slide we will talk about how the team structure actually is so wasan being the cto handles uh, uh the hiring side of the um, ownership uh, he also owns the technology part of the uh, i mean obviously see and uh, technology team also the delivery so the green shades that you see the first two 
uh, ideally speaks about Seema, who is the uh, talent acquisition lead, who takes care of uh, uh, hiring within technology team, rolls up to Vasant. I also roll up to Vasant. The architects, uh, front end and back end also uh, roll up to Vasant and uh, the project management team also rolls up to Vasant. So the idea that I was mentioning, K Vasant takes care of technology hiring, uh, technology solutioning and technology delivery. So that is how we are shaped up. Below these <coughs> frontline uh, people who report to Vasant is where most of the activity happens, where uh, the module leads and the technical leads are kind of taking care of the overall uh, delivery. <coughs> okay, the one clear uh, uh, distinct thing about this team structure is you see that all the TLs and developers are reporting into the uh, project managers. Uh, unlike in some organizations, you see that uh, architects uh, are owners of uh, some part of the people also. In this case, uh, we have kept the architects uh, uh, to be, uh, you know, owning the complete uh, delivery, uh, oh, sorry, uh, complete solutioning of the technology. Okay, uh, we can move ahead, please. Um, the next slide ideally speaks about the culture uh, that we have, um, and like any growing company, uh, though we are twenty-five year old company, we still call ourselves as a product-based organization and a startup uh, specifically. So whenever you hear uh, the uh, lifestyle and the way how people work in a product-based organization and a startup kind of a culture, uh, you will find the same thing with uh, you know FNP also, which speaks about uh, being very diverse and uh, uh, you know the combination of the male and female uh, workshop that we do is quite healthy. Uh, I'm sure that when this PPT was created, it was 21% of female employees. I'm sure uh, that numbers uh, should have increased a lot now. Uh, th 35 years and below, which is the youngest amount of population that we have is 70% of the team constitutes to that. Uh, we have one of the very key things that we follow is every employee when they join, uh, our ownership towards the company and the employee is more like we should be celebrating people with long lasting and high performance uh, kind of uh, uh, expectation. Hence, you see that 22% of our team members are those who have spent more than uh, five years uh, in the organization. Uh, some of the other aspects uh, you see here is the uh, positive engagement uh, that we do uh, across uh, FNP, 89% of them are kind of happy. And uh, the, the culture, the accountability, transparency, innovation, these are some of the key things that kind of uh, bring us as to the uh, forefront of any, uh, in a way, how I can say is uh, keeping the young population involved uh, in most of the activities that we do. We, we being a customer centric e-commerce uh, company, we never know from where uh, great ideas come from. So. We are always years for uh, those kind of uh, feedback that we may get. I will skip through uh, the next two slides also really fast. Uh, we can go to the next one. Um, uh, anything specific you want to mention here, uh, Seema, for people policies? Yeah, sure. So I'll just uh, walk you through uh, the people policies at FNP. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Seema Garg. And I'm taking care of your the talent acquisition at Perlman Petals, right? So I'll uh, start with uh, sharing a couple of uh, people policies that we have and also the employee benefits. First of all, uh, learning and upskilling is something that we take very seriously within the company. So we have uh, started with a policy called e-learning policy, wherein all our members can, uh, you know, decide if they want to pursue a course technically or behaviorally. And we enable that, we reimburse that cost and people are allowed to, uh, you know, upskill themselves. Uh, they can decide it uh, by themselves and do this. Uh, next up, we have health on a high for this purpose. Uh, we have started with a medical policy in terms of which we provide a medical coverage of up to three LPA to uh, all our members and this is applicable for the employee his or her spouse and up to two children uh, next uh, we have practice membership that's also something that you know will benefit our members in terms of health benefits 
So wherein by way of Plateau membership, all our members uh, get free Plateau membership, which entitles them to uh, seven free consultations, medical consultations in a month for a family of up to six members total. So that is again, uh, something that we've started uh, to take care of our uh, members' health. Next up, we have pink leaves. Uh, now, this is specifically for women uh, during that time of the month, you know, just to provide them some sort of comfort and rest. This is uh, provided every month. Uh, one pink leaf is entitled, I mean, every woman employee of the company is entitled to one pink leaf per month. Uh, next, we have maternity and paternity leaves as well. So in terms of maternity, uh, across the industry, it's a standard practice to uh, provide six months of paternity leave, and we are doing the same thing. Paternity leave is an additional benefit that we are providing. This is for new fathers, and uh, this is uh, uh, up to seven days of paternity leave is given to new fathers. Uh, medical insurance I've already covered in terms of health on a high. We also have flexible compensation baskets. So we have certain tax saving components like so meal vouchers, leave travel allowance. Uh, then we have national pension scheme and we have company car also. This will be applicable as per grade and pay range. And uh, this people uh, can customize the salary structure also in order to save up on tax. Okay, next, uh, of course, being a member of FNP, uh, every FNP member is entitled to a 30% discount on company website, right? So these are a couple of people policies. I'll move ahead, Prashant. Thank you. Okay, so quickly, the journey that FNP has uh, gone through uh, since uh, uh, the last 25 years is what I have mentioned here. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, company started 25 years or you know back with one store, and the way how the company has progressed, you can see some of the key milestones that we were able to achieve. Uh, 1999, when the first logo was launched, and right 2002, when the first website uh, was launched called FNP.com. Uh, 2002 is uh, a specific or a, a, a distinct year for FNP because that is when we had actually gone online and retail. And I'm sure that uh, if you guys know some of the big companies when they started retail, Matlab, eBay's and Amazon's and Flipkart's, right? These these people were uh, creating uh, uh, stuff only uh, probably in 2005, 6, 7 time frame is when they they started becoming more prominent and uh, important for the uh, uh, overall uh, e-commerce area or right e-commerce online selling. So uh, in a way, what I wanted to communicate is 2002 is uh, way back uh, when FNP had the capabilities to do uh, online retail uh, e-commerce business. Since then, even before. Uh, Amazons and Flipkarts were establishing themselves in India. Uh, at that point of time, it was only uh, eBay, if I remember, was uh, successfully being able to deliver things uh, uh, across uh, India. Uh, 2015, the expansion of uh, FNP.com uh, happened and uh, we had uh, Dubai, which opened up. Subsequently, uh, in the last uh, four years or so, we have been able to launch many geographies and the, uh, the pipeline also uh, appears to be very strong. Our uh, recommendation or our target is actually, we should be able to roll out at least uh, two geographies in one month, or at least uh, one geography in the next two months, at least. That is the roadmap that we have for the next 10 months or so, okay? And uh, moving on, uh, the other websites, uh, like I mentioned, Singapore, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, and uh, Philippines, Malaysia. We also have a, a website which is, you know, in Arabic for people who want to kind of uh, experience the websites in uh, Arabic, right? So it, it works primarily in the Saudi Arabia region uh, for those people. We can move to the next slide, please. We will also talk about the technology journey. Um, like I was mentioning, the two big milestones that happened was FNP going uh, online, and from the time that we went online to uh, now, we had uh, two versions of uh, FNP website live. The second one is currently going on. Uh, the third version of it is going to be launched in, uh, let's say, a year, uh, a year and a half from now. 
the preparation for that is currently happening however in the meantime the mi main milestones is 2002 we spoke about we going retail online e-commerce space so the first website was launched version 2 in 2010 and uh, right now we are in uh, the 2016 time space where we call it as revit 1 uh, the subsequent things are more of upgrades and not uh, specifically uh, you know a, a whole overhaul about uh, what we were doing okay android app launched in 2014 we also have ios apps also which got rolled out a year later but uh, revit one is the uh, platform on which the current infrastructure is built this is a apache off base uh, framework uh, erp kind of a framework on which the front end and back end have been built um, and ever since 2016 to now we have been able to scale this uh, application and platform to the maximum and we know that uh, it is time that we need to overhaul the erp based application to a uh, microservices based architecture which is right now in the journey next slide please uh, 2015 ios we saw 2021 we have started uh, some part of uh, revit 2 going live since it is a microservices kind of a model uh, by the time that we have all the modules live and all the front ends interacting with them it is going to take another uh, year or a year and a half or so from now so basically this is the technology journey that we had um, the key pointers on the technology journey would be from uh, 20 uh, i mean the first website that we launched 2002 2003 to 2016 when we have the current application which is built on running 2022 is when the first version or the small version of uh, revit 2 was made live revit 2 again is as i was mentioning microservices based architecture that we have implemented uh, overall these were the high points that we had on a technology standpoint uh, the next four things that i was talking about which me and sharad will go through are these uh, how do we see the real talent and the new talent that is coming into the system and how uh, from our lens how do we see you guys right so we, we expect that uh, the people who are joining us should have these uh, four or five qualities uh, obviously the first one is have a very very high uh, spirit and a very passionate soul who should be able to you know try and test as much as possible and uh, see how much of uh, capabilities is what you can uh, express uh, while you are working here uh, the mindset that you need to have is that of a very very core programming mindset here we don't mean that you know, write the code in the most complex language but the mindset should be in such a way that uh, you are able you you are able to display the skills and acumen uh, that is needed for a programming mindset. Uh, you will see the traces of all these when we are going to talk to you uh, after the first one or two rounds and the when the discussions happen and face to face happen one on one happen. You will see that uh, we will start to evaluate all these four or five parameters, right? So, engineering software development is all about how you are able to do create new things however it is also important that whenever a issue or a bug or a problem that arrives on the production environment or the production minus one environments etc we should be having that very very keen thought process about solving the problem in the software language it is called as uh, d uh, debugging and also creating uh, root cause analysis etc however the intent that i need to solve a problem is going to be very very important in the complete uh, development life cycle okay so we will be trying to see how you guys are going to fare in these areas uh, the other two things are more of uh, ability to comprehend the problem uh, be very very conceptual when it comes to be able to you know uh, think about any solution that needs to be done conceptual ka matlab ye bhi ho sakta hai ki you should be able to imagine that uh, uh, the solution that you are creating is going to be a scalable one uh, uh, longevity of that solution should be higher uh, security of that solution should be higher right these areas you should and in fact since we are in a uh, customer facing application development 
back end, uh, which is the call centers and the partner teams, which is all our franchises outlets that we have across the countries. Uh, unko bhi, we should be able to give solutions which are more of long term scalable. And hence, the conceptual understanding that you will be able to display should also be uh, at uh, you know a high notch. Uh, like I was mentioning, five years plus, uh, there is significant amount of people who have been in the system. So long term commitment and uh, high adaptability towards uh, uh, learning and agility, uh, learning primarily is something which we will uh, you know very very keenly be watching out from you guys. Okay, uh, you can talk about the next slide, please, uh, Sharan. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, so that being uh, one of the contexts that I said, we have very, we have been always looking out for fresh minds, new minds who can, who can uh, be part of building our platform. And like you have heard, we are on our path to convert our monolith system into microservices based our new. Uh, a new phase of uh, a platform, right? Uh, which, uh, yeah, is getting developed over, over this year and may go com get completed mid next year, right? And that's where we would also want our process or our evaluation to help us in finding uh, these minds who are interested and who are aligned with the kind of thought process we are all having with a similar culture that we follow uh, primarily. So uh, the first uh, part uh, would be while uh, a group discussion, uh, which would be helping us to understand uh, how uh, are you trying to participate in a situation. Uh, it has, it has uh, basically it will try to measure you from multiple aspects. Uh, Right, so it will help us understand your participation level uh, under a given situation, uh, and then it would be aptitude test primarily that should help us understand the ability to solve problems. Right, uh, in in primarily in software engineering, uh, it could be across any area. Engineering, especially in software, caters to various areas. It could be development. It could be uh, QA, it could be managing DevOps, uh, it could be uh, even designing. All of them uh, require a different kind of a, uh, ability to understand the concept, understand the problem statements, and then articulate solutions around them. So aptitude will be aligned more in these lines, uh, which can uh, help us understand where it uh, stands. Web fundamentals. Yeah, you know that we are into e-commerce now and on e-commerce, everything works on the internet. Internet would mean web and that's where web fundamentals is a way to measure. While it is not a qualifier, one of the indicators that you could see here is Q. Q means a qualifier round. That means uh, in these rounds, we are going to measure uh, a score and uh, meeting that score is an important criteria to move, to move further. Whereas web fundamentals, we treat it as a good to have kind of a, uh, knowledge and it would help us uh, in creating custom training plans uh, over, over the induction process or over the uh, onboarding process. Then yeah. just to add one point, the aptitude and web fundamentals, I believe is uh, one hour session kind of a thing so you guys can treat it as one part of the evaluation though it is split down into various uh, line items but uh, from uh, attempting this it is going to be a one hour session where 30 minutes each is what you will get so treat it as one assessment only right and uh, uh, and then comes the technical round uh, primarily uh, most of our core members who, who are part of our platform uh, development right from R1 to our newer platform, they are going to be uh, also part of uh, talking to you. It would be more of conversations. We can treat them as conversations that would help uh, all of us understand uh, each other well, right? However, uh, it would be more tech 
tech in terms of understanding uh, again a kind of a, a collaborative problem solving collaborative uh, and then comes uh, uh, another uh, round wherein it would also be about understanding the uh, consistency there uh, with how things are fed with technical round one and it will again be a similar kind of a problem solving and ability to uh, visualize concepts and ability to uh, get to know things uh, and try to react to those situations in these discussions more 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 with problem solving and uh, personality would be the final round right. where... just just two parts uh, sharan sorry just before we go to personality uh, tech rounds guys you uh, you should consider this more of uh, evaluation from uh, your uh, application of uh, your knowledge and skills and primarily here we are not talking about uh, computer science only or mechanical guys only kind of a situation everybody will go through a technology round however it will be more like how sharad was mentioning the acumen of uh, solving problems together is how we will evaluate so if you are expecting that uh, if you have a uh, question in mind ki uh, what would a triple e guy do while appearing for a technology round for a sd you know for a software environment don't worry it will not be ask you to write a code code kind of a thing but it will be more of a journey that you can you know travel uh, along with uh, solving problems uh, in a, in a way to say that thank you thank you sharad right right so uh, and yeah overall uh, it is it would more be a conversation so we would let you speak what you think we don't want to restrict or we don't look for right or wrong in these discussions that is one thing that also we want to highlight so you need to speak out uh, uh, in these discussions that's when we would know you more uh, about your uh, your thought processes and about how you are looking at solving a problem right we, we all understand that sometimes problem solving may not happen right at the go you may need to collaborate and that's how we want to look at these discussions as and yeah personality uh, finally would be all about getting to know and uh, like we said one of the important things uh, uh, right at the start we talked about culture and values that's very important uh, uh, for a group or a tribe to succeed right so that's where personality is more to uh, see how things fit well uh, uh, between each of us right uh, can we move to next one yeah and the next important areas uh, right technology brings you learning a lot of learning engineering every day on the internet is very dynamic and when i mean dynamic we all know how we use internet every day a new way of uh, interacting with people or interacting with uh, uh, a purchase process things keep changing so uh, so frequently uh, we never thought upi would come into existence uh, into in, in last couple of years and it has been the most transacted technology uh, on the internet or maybe via the digital platform to be more specific so things like these keep happening internet has a way of uh, creating uh, uh, these kind of disruptions and that's where we also are trying to choose the technology uh, stack that is going to help us be part of any kind of disruption that could happen on internet over next few years uh, and we also believe that technology is all about adapting uh, to the dynamics of it it is not constant and so what you see here may hold good for us for next five years or so post five years yeah we again would have to do a similar kind of exercise so starting there we, we try to uh split things across four prime areas for us front end back end database quality well there are more uh, areas uh, that that are support services on the front end we are uh, html css js is how the web pages work uh, right on the internet one of the core architecture model that we follow is micro front end and okay sorry uh the powerpoint was lost let me see if i could get there quickly and share 
let me know if you all can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. I can. Okay, great. So, this bar. Can you see the complete PPT or is a bar coming into the? Okay. I can fine. see. Yes, yes. Right. It is readable. I'll let you know if in case. Right, right. So, on the front end, we were talking about micro front end architecture. This is all about. Uh, Making all your making all your front end into smaller apps and deploying them. React JS is the core uh, library which we are using to develop all our front end. And apps, the mobile apps are also following the philosophy of React and eventually React Native. Next JS is another uh, framework that we use uh, to develop our server side pages from front end. On the backend side, yeah, it's primarily Java based stack and uh, that's where spring comes into the context here uh, spring boot is a microservices uh, driven framework it has a it has a family of libraries and uh, it's keep uh, uh, allowing us to evolve on microservices designs search engine so, uh, e-commerce needs a very strong search engine solar apache solar uh, apache is one of the most uh, uh, known open source uh, community uh, solar is one of them uh, uh, one of the search engine from them which we have been customizing to suit our needs kafka also is one of the apaches uh, uh, technology uh, as well and similarly uh, we also use other uh, setups like kamunda which is a workflow engine tools quads job management and there are many other uh, technical stack if you could go into details uh, but we are trying to highlight only the critical aspects. Redis is a cache uh, setup that we use. And we uh, also uh, use various kind of databases which will come later. Apart from that, uh, uh, the complete deployment of the system happens to be on Kubernetes. Uh, we follow Docker uh, for containerization and Kubernetes for orchestration. And they, part, they play a very important role in our complete release pipeline of how we do code releases onto production. And Tebesium happens to be our primary stream uh, uh, builder uh, along with Kafka. And the databases, uh, we have chosen different databases by purpose. Uh, Arango DB is a graph based database uh, primarily. Uh, graph uh, would help us in visualizing things. Uh, uh, more open connectivity kind of a model. And that's where uh, we look at uh, uh, graph based database necessary at uh, certain use cases. MySQL, certainly the RDBMS Congo, where you have the MySQL side of it. Cassandra, primarily to work with large data sets. Uh, it has its uh, own capabilities to work with large data sets and deliver under speed. Snowflake as well, which is which is known for its speed of uh, data processing, especially in the in the area of data engineering, data science, or big data kind of a uh, context, right? And yeah, Git, the most popular repo that continues to stay there. Jenkins and happens to be our pipeline uh, process through uh, pipeline tool to which we build all of them. Terraforms is how we deploy all our infra. AWS is our infra uh, cloud as of now, but we also are on a path to make multi-cloud kind of a uh, setup wherein we may we are looking at working with even Google Cloud and Azure uh, going further as a combination of all three. Then Akamai, one of the important uh, component uh, uh, and one of the well-known content delivery, the CDN there. And yeah, when you build all of them, it is important to monitor how they are working, the health of them. So New Relic, ELK, Sentry, these are the tools that we use. They are our pilot's dashboard, in other words. Uh, like how a pilot would have a dashboard when they are initiating their flight. Similarly, whenever our productions are in place, we go to these dashboards to see if everything is under control. And then comes quality assurance, very important area uh, 
and especially on internet anything that goes bad gets reacted immediately uh, right so quality teams are there to ensure that we don't slip through anything that is uh, anything that is not right or not meaningful so we are we approach uh, towards bdd ddd very complex way of uh, doing development ddd happens to be behavior driven development ddd is test driven development while to master it is a very uh, very uh, challenging uh, point but we are attempting to go there hello sharad you there i am i am uh, you can hear me can you hear me hello okay good uh that's a confirmation right so then certainly manual aspect of uh, qa is very important uh, because we need to verify as humans how things are working as well while automation does exist at the same time to speed up the overall process of release right so manual covers a lot of functional aspects user your user experience and ui automation we are using tools of selenium apm cucumber postman okay i cannot hear sharad oh, can okay. we move on to the next slide right uh, but people say they can hear me so i am going to see one so normally actually my question is would be fine prashant is there any confusion okay so yeah okay i'll i'll uh, move to the next part so while this is all about our technology stack uh, this is just a, a quick summary of things right and uh, then comes our next part while uh, we go towards the learning areas how do you reach there once all the technical evaluation is finished right uh, what happens next that's where our phase wise plan is going to help us the first phase uh, goes through a 22 day plan this 22 day plan is going to make everybody go through a very standard evaluate uh, standard learning process or induction process wherein everybody is made to understand about internet the web fundamentals the web technologies how they are getting to be used right and during this process like it says uh, the ui exercises the uh, uh, various kinds of web based uh, exercises are given and uh, we will keep trying them out uh, and there will be mentors aligned with uh, uh, each of the groups uh, and uh, these mentors are going to help in uh, uh, getting our learning process smoother uh, at the at the larger part we believe in one philosophy uh, of uh, not making not give you fish but we are here to help you find the fish so we we just uh, uh, we, we just follow this kind of a philosophy wherein learning becomes a very exciting process right and uh, so you will see a lot of uh, mentors helping you out in those senses and uh, uh there would be a trainer as well who would be feeding you with enough information or tools or uh, material that could uh, also lead you to learning these things in a faster way while this session this 22 day plan will get you exposure to the overall business what it does how it works right and uh, it also uh, exposes you to this 22 day schedule uh, each day what is to be done and for each day there would be exercise and these exercises are reviewed by the mentors right uh, uh, while, while a trainer is going to give a quick walk through of what it is and how you can learn them about more and another philosophy that we also follow is smart deliverable specific measurable achievable result oriented and time bound uh, i would let you to explore about it more uh, for the uh, keeping the meeting to be a short time so uh, this philosophy has helped us achieve our plans very well so from of a interesting uh, uh, process a uh, smart deliverable approach also enables a process of planning better and predicting things better 
product understanding as well. A product understanding is uh, whatever applications that we build, we call them as products, our desktop version, our mobile version side, or our back office applications, backends, each of them are products. So uh, you will get to walk through uh, about each of these products as well and process understanding. Now, uh, we use Jira, Confluence, and other kind of uh, tools, Git, a lot of tools that are uh, used in our day-to-day -day development, uh, right? So how to use them? and how to collaborate with team, all of this is what the process would get you. Agile is a methodology that we strongly follow and believe in here, right? And so that's how uh, the first phase of 22 day evaluation would work like once the complete uh, technical assessments are done. Uh, and that is when you join FNP. Then the second phase uh, of uh, it would uh, start wherein uh, each of uh, each of the uh, at the end of 20 day each of the mentors would have come up with their own uh, assessments of uh, uh, each of their mentees uh, or people who were part of their teams right and using that information we try to structure and uh, root based on the interests that we have identified each one of you into one of these areas so, uh, not everybody may work on all the areas. Some may want to work on all areas. Some may want to say, no, I'm good at UI. Some may want to say, I'm good at only server programming. I like it a lot. Some may want to say, I want to be on to app development. One may want to say, I want to be part of infrastructure and DevOps, QA, right? So we, we, we let people uh, uh, demonstrate that during this 22 day period. And accordingly, we will uh, put them onto the specialized areas uh, within the team. So UI uh, will be one of the uh, specialized area, server-side programming, microservices, AI ML, uh, uh, Android, iOS, uh, React Native, primarily, AWS, understanding, QA, manual automation and performance database, then uh, particularly all the databases that we are dealing with, and infra and platform and DevOps, another area. While uh, it is not uh, that one cannot work on all the areas, but we all understand getting getting to know all of them on day one is practically not possible. So one may start choosing one of these areas and then keep going up with more knowledge as we uh, as with time. So uh, then a more specialized training would start under each of these areas. So where you will be part of the specific uh, teams. Uh, where you will find more uh, subject matter experts in each of these areas guiding you uh, uh, in that uh, learning process, right? So, yeah, uh, to a large part, uh, this is how uh, the complete evaluation to onboarding would look like or the first three months post the uh, technical evaluation would look like. This area would be going up to three months post the 22 days. So if the first one month goes into the basic uh, uh, evaluation of web, web standards, the second round of the phase will be uh, more specialized for the next two months to uh, uh, three months primarily. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much that was the uh, last part of uh, the technology uh, uh, replacement kind of a discussion. We, we wanted to present you one last uh, video that uh, FNP has just concluded. Uh, this, this was one uh, uh, video that we launched on May 2nd. Since it is still new in everybody's minds, we, we thought of playing this one video. Uh, we, we have in fact started a lot of uh, TV commercials and newspaper advertising. Uh, we will soon be featuring in a lot of OTT platforms and social media websites also. Uh, this is uh, this is the first video that got launched in the journey of our uh, new uh, logo that we launched on May 2nd, along with that, uh, the new approach of FNP. We can try to play that video on your uh, uh, screen, uh, Sharad, with, your, with the audio and uh, let people hear through that. Does the audio reach? Yeah, the audio isn't, but uh, yeah.
I believe uh, most of you guys who who kind of watch uh, television uh, 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 during your evening times, etc., you might have come across this advertising. However, yeah, this is the first advertisement that we have launched. So, just thought you guys should also be uh, looking at it uh, here once. So that was the whole idea. Uh, the the celebrities that are actually roped uh, in with FNP are these two people, along with them, uh, Saif Ali Khan and his daughter Sarah Ali Khan are the other two participants. Uh, more for South India, we have uh, uh, South India, uh, Samantha Ruth Prabhu is the uh, other celebrity who's going to be featuring in uh, South India kind of uh, setup. But yeah, these are the four or five uh, celebrities that we have roped in as of now. Great. Thanks, Sharad. So that gets us to the uh, end of the overall uh, presentations and discussions that we wanted to do with you guys. Um, we can open up for some questions uh, that might come up and uh, spend another five, 10 minutes there. Okay, Anita, you guys can uh, take over. If uh, we hear any questions, we will answer them and uh, we will conclude in the next five, 10 minutes, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prashant. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, you can just raise your hand or else you can type in the chat box and the FNP team will be happy to answer it. So I guess there are questions coming up in the chat box, uh, Prashant and Sharad. Right. So uh, we will do this collaboratively, uh, uh, Anita. You can take okay. the first question. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, the first step in the hiring process would be uh, the evaluation we were talking about, the web programming and aptitude test, which would constitute to 30 minutes each kind of a test. Uh, it'll be a one hour duration. And I believe uh, Anita and her team will be sending out those uh, links to you to kind of uh, go through. Uh, those are the next steps. Uh, group discussion will also follow after the aptitude and fund web fundamentals are done. And uh, the people who are qualifying uh, should get through the group discussion ke baad two technology rounds uh, and uh, a nominal HR kind of a round will be there. So overall group discussion, aptitude, fundamental two rounds, uh, uh, technology rounds face to face, uh, two rounds uh, is what we are talking about. So. Overall, it will be four distinct uh, activities that you will be doing. Uh, is there any bond in this company? There isn't any as such. We don't believe in, uh, you know, uh, any bond system or uh, as so. So the short answer is no. Uh, I, yeah, go ahead, Sharad. Right. So, uh, primarily, uh, web, uh, right. However, oh, we're not, let's, we're not the, at, we're not let's read the question also. Probably people who are, okay. you know, probably not seeing it. Sure, so the sure. question was so from, pro, which, from which concepts uh, of programming technical questions are asked? Uh, right. Sharad is answering that. Right. So, uh, primarily web. However, we, we understand that uh, at the curriculum, things may not be uh, at that uh, expectations that we wanted to. So we would just want to look things from the aptitude perspective more, uh, the logical ability and the programming ability. Uh, so concepts uh, would be maybe object oriented approaches could be one of the area that I could talk about and more of that. Uh, however, it will be more generic than being specific with programming side. Okay. The next question I'm reading is as hiring. Uh, hello, this hiring is for full-time job or only for internship? The employment that we are looking at is uh, for, for uh, a long-term relationship. Long-term engagement, though, though the uh, first uh, uh, three months that uh, uh, Sharad was mentioning will be called as internship. Uh, uske baad, it will be long term employment. When the process starts, okay, the process starts as soon as you guys get the link 
and uh, anita if you can take that one question from uh, akanksha yes yes sure so i guess this is related to uh, the pre placement link and the assessment so uh, don't right. worry about it the pre placement is happening today and there's a test which is scheduled for you guys we'll update you about that so assessment uh, timings and the details would be shared by us we did one round yesterday we'll have another round um, maybe today or tomorrow we'll inform you about all that so you can ask all your uh, questions related to you know uh, apart from the assessment uh, with the fnpt they'll help you okay. with that so uh, what is pattern of technical round like how sharad was mentioning it will be more of a discovery uh, you will uh, be asked how you would be able to solve some problems and engineering related bahut kam rahega but it will be more of attitude aptitude and how you can solve problems uh, on those lines okay if you were placed in your company would it be work from home or work from office okay so one of the slides that seema was talking about is uh, right now in the current situation uh, the demand uh, is uh, not in the favor of work from office only so work from home is uh, open option and right now most of the fnp team members in the engineering team technology team are working uh, from their own homes and uh, yeah the, the short answer is both the options are available however uh, since it is going to be an internship and training heavy intense we would appreciate or we would want to uh, see people uh, you know participate full time uh, so we need to make sure that the arrangement whether it is work from home or office that uh, dedicated line and dedicated access is available to you guys that will be more of a uh, good problem to solve uh, the next question okay that anita can take uh, abhishek okay so i i have couple of uh, uh, prashant think is that this is also going sure. on a youtube live and multiple questions are there also the questions uh, for the candidates who are on youtube live or watching us live there i guess you all have confusion related to bond uh, prashant has already mentioned that there is no bond thing what fnp follows so there is no bond as such if there is anything from their side they'll definitely inform you uh, post the process of assessment will go on no uh, ambiguity sorry in anita later no ambiguity there is no bond anytime. okay there's no yeah. there's no bond any time okay yes. so i guess everybody here on zoom as well as on youtube live got it very clear there is no bond okay ah. then uh, yes uh, we already had done the first round of assessment with you guys so you'll have second round of assessment maybe today or tomorrow we'll announce the date and we'll inform you so don't be uh, don't get confused or don't get panic okay and post that there would be uh, once you get selected in the first assessment you will be uh, allowed to go for the second round of assessment post the both the assessments are done there is a gd round after the gd round there is a technical uh, interview round so this is the process if you get if you clear one round of assessment you will be eligible for second if you clear the second you will be eligible for group discussion if you clear group discussion you will be eligible for the interview so this is the process what we will be following and at every stage muni team will communicate with every student so don't worry you can always reach us over the emails and we will revert you say sir uh, yeah so i think next one is is there any stipend for internship yeah uh, the role uh, would uh, have a package uh, listed out and you will also get to know uh, uh, that during the evaluation during the personality round or the post that okay i think this was answered i am done with yesterday my aptitude test what is the next process uh, what is work location i think we answered this as well so the evaluation flow will be online yes everything is online and the next one uh, i have already given a few test i think it has been answered as well uh, i'll only try to pick the one that is not answered technical round is type of mcq or code writing it is mcq primarily Yeah, test, okay. huh, there isn't any coding test, right? Wo, 
Right. We can right. mention that. Yes, there is yes. no coding test. It's all MCQ. Okay. I think we're repeating the same questions. Okay, I think uh, most of the questions have been answered. Even the last one, my exam was done, but when I submit, they'll ask me, are you terminate? I click OK button. I think. You can just uh, yes, Sharad, I'll take that question, I think. Yeah. So that is a technical, uh, I mean, I guess this candidate had certain problem at her end. So I'll uh, speak to her and personally and we'll address her query. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, for the rest of the folks who still have questions, I, I would suggest, uh, I believe this uh, uh, PPT and the video will be uh, on YouTube. Uh, you guys go through the complete video and still if case and you have any questions, right? Let's uh, reach out to Anita and team. Uh, we should be able to answer everything that you need. Right, Prashant, uh, I guess we have answered all all the questions by student uh, it's the repetitive one which is coming up so uh, i think uh, we can close this in that case sure thank you uh, good luck everybody look forward thank you yeah. bye I think thank one, you, one last thing maybe yeah. uh, how's the work life balance okay very interesting question uh, we believe in uh, uh, the learning process and uh, one of the interesting things is we let people do uh, uh, what they like, right? And during that process, it helps uh, individuals to manage their time accordingly. And uh, you are allowed to plan your own day uh, here. And uh, all the leads look up to your plans and uh, the leads asking or, or giving out uh, plans to each individual. So uh, while we follow Agile policy, the most important thing is we expect each individual to talk about the kind of effort uh, they, they can put and the kind of time that they can invest, right? So uh, standard working hours do exist, but it is all about uh, uh, each one of us uh, thinking about uh, our own effort estimations and projecting our own effort estimations and deadlines. So deadlines are never upward. Uh, uh, sorry, never downward. That means they are not dictated or given down, but uh, they are upward. That means each one of us, when the task is assigned, we give our own deadlines. So that's, that itself uh, helps you in plan well uh, with all aspects of life, right? Whether it is, uh, you think of an ecosystem uh, where as a personality, you will try to balance on both sides. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think we can conclude. Sorry to block that. Okay, CTC, I think you can uh, get from Anita uh, offline. I think we can conclude. Yes, let's, let's conclude. Thank you guys, bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sharad, Prashant and Seema. Thank you very much for joining. Thank, Thank you so everyone. much everyone for your time. All the best to all of you. Have a wonderful rest of the day, please. Thank you. Have a great day.